as well, or are we just going off of the live? Uh, we're going yeah. off live and double record. Hello, everybody. I think we're live now. I am extremely excited that we are, guys, continuing our series on meaningful, on meaningful trends. So uh, we have uh, Dr. Frankie Williams here. Well, wait a sec. Where is I have prepared everything about okay. you and <laughs> it's disappeared. <laughs> Take your time, no problem. So, um, Frankie, I'm super, super excited that you joined us because you are obviously a leader. You talk about, uh, I actually saw your article um, on LinkedIn and I was like, oh my gosh, this is like, you know, I need to speak with you and I need to, uh, for people to know what you are thinking about the future because you're already doing it. You already are. Uh, making uh, taking your message and making this life you know for everybody better and this is kind of what I, this project is all about so can you please tell us about yourself and then of course those two important questions like you said huge questions what is the you know what's your vision for the future and what shall we do certainly um thank you so much i'm really grateful I'm honored to be on here, to be chosen to be one of the many esteemed guests that I've seen you already have um, on this segment. I am um, I'm humbled by, by this, um, especially because of the, uh, the purpose behind the questions themselves. Um, a little bit about myself. My name is Frankie Wilson. I am from Dallas, Texas. I, uh, my, all of my family is from New Orleans, Louisiana. This, so shout out to everyone in the boot. Um, I, what can I say uh, about myself? I've lived a thousand lives. That's how I like to introduce myself as man has <laughs> lived about a thousand lives. I have, um, I've lived life uh, in so many different ways. I've lived as a, as a musician. I've lived as an entertainer. I've lived as a, a, a an on-air radio personality, a syndicated award-winning um, internationally and nationally syndicated radio personality. I've lived a life as an accountant, uh, as a finance professional and an MBA. Um, I am currently living a life um, as a behavioral psychologist or working in behavioral psychology. I'm finishing my um, PhD uh, right now in um, IO, but I just also finished my certification in applied behavior analysis. I've, I've lived a lot of different lives and because of that, I've had uh, varied experiences and opportunities to understand more about myself, how life works, and more so how life works when I understand and accept more of myself, which kind of goes into a little bit of my response to your question. I don't want to spend too much time on myself, but more on the question and how it helps to affect others outside of myself. I feel like any question that's bigger than you is worth really diving into, and you definitely gave some questions that are bigger than ourselves. Uh, a vision for the world and then how to prepare for it. There's a, um, there is a, a mantra that I like to live by. And that is, especially for those that follow me, and by the way, you can do so um, at mrfrankywilson.com and I'm at Mr. Frankie Wilson on all social media. But the mantra is to own your actions in order to create your experiences. Mm -hmm. Own your actions, you can create your experiences. I think a, a big problem that uh, should be addressed directly, not, not in a subtle way, is the fact that we are at a point in life um, where there is a, a turn and a change that is coming about where the, this, the new generation is calling for accountability more now than ever before. Yeah. And that's a good thing. <clears throat> Although they've been, it's been called many things. They've been called a woke generation, um, a generation filled with disruptors. I understand a lot about disruption. I've worked as an entrepreneur for um, over 20 years of my life um, in different facets of my life. I'm actually in um, office right now of uh, uh, marketing and communications company that I co-principled, the Zoe Communications Agency here in Deep Ellum. And uh, so I understand about all of that, but I more than that understand the value and accountability and ownership and how it's not so broad, but it's actually central to every person's life. 
here's a, a big thing that I would like for people to prepare to prepare themselves to do. And what that is, is to really take on the onus and the responsibility for everything, every decision that they make, but not just that, but even the decisions they feel that they don't make, the consequences that they experience, that they would take ownership of those as well, because they came as a consequence of some behavior they chose and selected in life. Thus, they had a part in what they're experiencing. That's a hard truth. That is a very hard truth for people to accept, is that I had something to do with the uncomfortableness that I'm experiencing. There's a, um, and I, I get it, it's a, it's a natural inclination for humans to evade pain. Mm -hmm. We understand that no one wants to experience things that hurt, things that, are, that, are, that um, cause discomfort, bring about discomfort. And so it's, it's easier, it feels better, you know, to push responsibility on to another person, another entity, anything like that even though we don't have the ability to change the entire world ourselves, for the part that we're responsible for changing or having an effect and an influence over, we cannot do it if we do not first take responsibility for that which we have influence and effect over. Yeah, I love that. I love that. Yeah. Absolutely, 100%. And it's kind of, uh, it's a big dilemma. Even when I started this project, I was thinking, you know, I'm a big, also in calling people to taking accountability responsibility if you really want to see that change right and uh, mm -hmm. whenever i'm asking that question what do you see in the future and i'm also asking very people who are super super conscious of how much work it takes like they are doing that yeah. so it's like oh my gosh we have so much to do and the previous project was all about for example, advanced uh, about advanced uh, innovating uh, therapy and just getting people to somehow become healthier in, in a way they relate to, you know, to the world, to, to each other, to themselves, sure. right? It's a big question because there is a like a sort of uh, also invitation. Let's just fly away into the bliss and it's all going to be great. <laughs> <laughs> it, yeah, that's a real thing. It's a real thing. It's a real it's thing. It's easier thing. It's what feels good. Sure. Absolutely. It feels good. And, that, you know, and uh, of course, then it becomes this whole, you know, what is our future generation? What our kids, uh, I have five daughters, for example, all different ages, wow. almost all different generations from 24 wow. to 12. And I'm looking at my 12 year olds and I see how they think already. It's, it's so much softer. It's so much less accountability if you want, right? It's so much we, sure. we have dancing around those parents trying to like, oh, okay. It's like, don't get upset, you know? <laughs> it's a, it's yeah. a whole thing right around it. I can see comparing even to my 24 year olds who are much more street wise and, you know, traveled a lot, lived a lot. So they like, you know, they tough, they like, they prepared to do work. And I'm, see, I'm seeing like, oh my gosh, um, so where are we going with this, right? What do, we, what do we need to do? In your TED talk, you talked about behavior or environment almost. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Belief, right? And it's a big, big question. Certainly. So I want to ask you about that. Like, what is then for us to do, even as parents, as teachers, as, uh, you know, all, let's say all the generation who is like kind of right now still is in charge of the, you know, where we're going and how we are influencing our kids. Uh, what is the message for the kids? How, what should we really kind of uh, prepare them for? Um, accountability is, a, I think, is almost like it's something they might resent, right? It's something they might say, uh, like, ah, that's it. <laughs> that, that, that's, that's work, right? Sure. Um, so, so tell us a little bit about it. How should we prepare? What should we do? And of course, what, what, you know, what our kids could expect to live in if they do what, what you propose. I appreciate you bringing up the TED Talk um, because that actually... Do, that actually is a good setup for um, this question. So I had um, two TED Talks. One was um, one was speaking also about behavior, but this one was centered around the question that came, it was built off the question, which came first, the chicken or the egg. And so, you know, I did a play on that, which came first behavior, which comes first behavior or belief. 
um, yeah. and that. We did that with the um, uh, Rochester Institute of Technology in Dubai. Um, I appreciate them so much for, and Mahin, especially, especially I want to shout her out for um, her help with that. So the, 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 the general idea is that many people believe uh, there's a statement, you know, if you believe it, you can achieve it. We throw that out all of the time. Um, and that pretty much um, sets you up for this idea that if you believe first, then your behavior follows. What I wanted to do was challenge that idea that behavior actually comes first. And there is a way to set up and influence behavior. Um, but once behavior, once, once behavior has provided evidence of what you can expect, then belief is established and belief is cemented and guides behavior from that point forward. One of the examples I gave was a hot stove, a, ch a child touching a stove, you know, and you don't know anything about the stove. So there's no belief in what the stove is going to be prior to. There's no, if I believe the stove is not going to be hot because you don't know it's hot. You go and touch that stove and you realize it's hot. And once your behavior has presented you with evidence of the consequence from your behaviors, your belief is established. If I touch that stove while it's hot, I'm going to get burned. Now your belief is cemented and it establishes your behavior going forward. Well, that's important to keep in mind when we're thinking about going, what's going forward, even when we're thinking about how to take accountability and how to own our own actions, because we would not have experienced the burn if we weren't around the stove. And so that has something to say about the environment that surrounds us. This is a very simplistic, very dumbed down, um, you know, uh, example, if you will, of what of my point. But um, never, nonetheless, it is still very much valid. And I, I got to this point through my studies, thank goodness, through um, ABA, um, Applied Behavior Analysis, to understand the impact of environment on behavior. So the responsibility and accountability that I have hope for. Um, our future generations to take on is not simply towards themselves, but towards the environment that they create in order to in order to establish and to promote what behavior should go in front, go forward from that point. So much like how if we weren't, if a child was not around the stove in the first place, they never would have experienced, they never would have to deal with burning their hands, perhaps with the evidence that we have in front of us from the behaviors that have already gone in front of us, we'll use things like global warming. We can, <laughs> we can use things like um, there are behaviors. I believe, for example, and this is one of the things that I've thrown out even in the research that I'm doing and um, towards uh, my dissertation, that there are some behaviors, behavior -center centered um, diseases even. There are some diseases that are of direct consequence to our behaviors. They don't just pop up and happen. Mm -hmm. um, an example of that would be 4%, um, and I'm only speaking towards um, in the United States, but one of the most recent statistics is 4% um, of people in the United States are born with diabetes. Mm -hmm. Well, if only 4% are born with diabetes, then there has to be some behavior that helps to enact diabetes in the lives of the other 96% that get it. That means that's behavior based. That means that there's something going on. There's some environmental structures and um, um, social economic structures that are helping to influence the behaviors that contribute to what is a, ultimately a con consequential in the form of diabetes and other behavior-based uh, diseases. So if we were to own our actions, then we would be able to take accountability for not just what we do, but what we do towards the environment we create towards this world in regards to this world that surrounds us. And we would be able to hopefully um, establish a better, more hopeful, more responsible outcome that can benefit our children and our children's children's going forward. Because right now, 
we are on a pathway to destruction. Whereas if we continue the way we've been doing, um, it would be insane to, con to consider uh, nothing but good things, sunshine, lollipops, and rainbows from here on out. We've done some pretty destructive things with this world <laughs> to this point. Yeah. And so in order to change that, it's not going to be passing it on to governments. It's not going to be hoping that the other organizations, the nonprofits and um, people with vision help to, to, to establish it. But it's going to start with ourselves personally, mm -hmm. um, taking on accountability towards uh, how we create an environment that helps to um, create a motivation for us to behave in a certain manner. And through that, through that uh, motivation and through that behavior being established, we are presented with evidence of how our lives can be better, how things can start to get better. It may not be immediate. Sometimes it takes successive approximation, small steps to get there. But through each step, if we pay attention to those steps, we at least understand that it's working, we're starting to move forward. And that evidence can help to cement our belief in what can be possible and what is possible. And hopefully we can move forward with that. Um, and so that's, that's a big basis of how we can prepare. It, um, again, by owning our actions, but owning our actions in regard to, you know, the environments around us and how we contribute to them for ourselves and the world around us, the people around us. Yeah, 100%, 100%. I love it. I love it. I think, of course, you're being a great role model, right? Because I feel it's not just that, you know, okay, I, I'm thinking, okay, as a parent, I, I'm here it starts with me, right? It's my kids. I, I That's right. Something. That's I'm right. Them. This is how it's done. And the more next generation can see, okay, this is possible. This is not just words, right? I've, you know, mm -hmm. you've taken responsibility. I think it's with fathers, especially I've had my own theory about, you know, this whole kind of attitude of you can go, you can get everything you want, you know, sure. just but they always, I think, especially, you know, fathers, daughters, that's a kind of a message, right? Go, you, my princess, go reach for the stars. But sure. one of the biggest like psychological things is for the father to say, and you know, and it's going to take some work. It's gonna, right. gonna, like, this is how I failed. Those are the mistakes I made. And this is how uh, I actually gotten there myself. Uh, or, or I didn't do it, you know, like, you know, it, it's for you. I, I show you where I'm at. Um, this is, I'm not lying to you that it's going to be easy. There's no romanticizing success. That's one of the things I talk about often sure. yeah. everything up for people because they, you know, I think that kind of understanding that yes, yes, you can, you can go there. This is what it takes. And this is how I've done it. And I think you are being amazing at that because you're showing you, you're like, okay, this is, this is me. This is how far I've gone. And, and you're being very open about it, about your path, right? About your thousand lives and, and like, yeah, everything. Yeah. This, this is what helps. This is what really helps. So I want to encourage everybody, of course, to start thinking that way as well about your life, about the message you're giving out to people. And uh, I feel like some honesty integrity in where you presenting yourself how hard it was what it takes is kind of part, of part of that journey and part of that invitation to um to really kind of support our new generation in uh, you mm -hmm. know in having very realistic expectations mm -hmm. of the work that needs to be done and yeah taking i can speak towards that in a lot of different ways as well yeah. you know um God, I'll choose a couple of different lives. So, so I um, still host, I still host a, a syndicated radio show. Um, grateful we just added another um, another syndicate today, um, another affiliate today. So, I mean, we're still moving forward, but my show started back with a podcast when podcasting wasn't a thing. It started back when blogging was a thing when people were doing written blogs, video blogs weren't even a thing uh, back then, back in like 07. Mm -hmm. And um, I was able to build it, not just by having a cool idea, but what I did was a mixture of different genres. I went with a passion and a vision that I was given. And um, from creating that thing, there was 
multiple nights per week where I was up to three or four in the morning every night, mm -hmm. multiple nights for over a year, over a year, easily, um, before I started to get recognized for what I was doing. And then that's, that's when the work started, of course, as many know, um, it, and just built on from that. So, I mean, that's, that's one good example of the hard work that it takes, but not only that, because I mean, at this point, I, um, I humbly and gratefully um, can say that with the show, we're able to be self-syndicated nationally and internationally over 23 different markets, 127 um, countries or whatnot. And um, we are in partnership with our affiliates and I'm so grateful every day to God for, for all of them. Um, that's because of the hard work and because of the vision that helped to create the provision behind the hard work. But there was also a lot of heartache <laughs> that came with it. And that's a real thing. Listen, I mean, um, uh, the many men would not expect me to say this, but when I was going through creating the show and um, the success of the show at the height of all of that is when I was in a failing marriage and I lost that marriage. Mm. All of that, <laughs> it, was, it was during that same time. You see this ring on my hand now. I'm, uh, I am um, remarried to an uh, incredible, incredible woman. I have a beautiful daughter, a brand new son, he's seven months old. And um, so, you know, I'm on cloud nine, but it's because of a lot of the sacrifice and the hardships. I lost a marriage, I lost a house, I lost two cars. I, lost, I mean, it was all sorts of loss <laughs> and pain that happened during that. One of, the, one of the big things that helped me to move forward was just what I'm saying now. At a breaking point, it took me about 33 years to get to the point to where I could really accept and embrace myself as opposed to the idea of myself, the idea that was given to me. Um, and that's of no fault to anyone else. We're raised, we're brought up from birth with an idea of who we are and who we should be. And at some point in life, over the generations, we have lost this thing that used to be a rite of passage for people where they uh, let go of what they were given to be and they make decisions for who they're going to be. I, th that was lost at some point. And so, you know, we have full generations now that are just out there living lives that don't belong to them. Mm. And they run into brick walls. I was one of those people. And so that, that, that has to, that contributed to a lot of my loss and my angst and my, and um, my failures and issues that I was running into. But I got to this point to where I was able to, this breakthrough where I was able to finally accept and embrace um, who God made me to be. And, um, understand that my position, my, I'm sorry, my purpose is not solely in a position, transcends positions actually, as does any and everyone else's. And through those revelations, I was able to begin um, rebuilding my motivation and my, um, uh, in my fervor and um, the things that I help to teach and build on now, even through uh, what I do in psychology and as a speaker. My life as a speaker started after that happened because, you know, many people that speak and many people that work in medicine, and psychology, things like that, that it typically was birthed through some pain that they experienced themselves. Either they're trying to figure out for themselves still, or they figured it out and they want to share with the whole world because, holy cow, this changed my life. That's me. That's who I am. Yeah. I've learned through owning all of that. It gives me freedom to know that, um, you know, I don't have to hide at all. Um, and no matter what anyone else has to say or think, I, and I give this to you and to any and every person that's watching this, we were never born with the requirement to accept or to commit to the expectations of another person. Mm. Not even our own. We were never born with the requirement to commit even to our own expectations. Those things can change. So with that understanding, 
I know now that I don't have to commit to anybody's ideas behind what I'm doing. And there, there is a place for wise counsel. There is a place for um, sound advice. But there's also another place for people that just are haters and people that just have their own opinions of what you're doing, you know? Um, and um, that place should not rest in your psyche and in um, your spirit. And, yeah. I love it. Yeah. I think it's, uh, you know, it's, it's such a, you know, when, when you owning yourself and you owning the bigger self, it's like you, you're going, that's, it's like a, you know, <laughs> speaks to my soul as well. You know, it's like a, you own the spiritual part that you are bigger, yes, absolutely. bigger than your expectations, especially with the, you know, the, where we, what are we born into those messages this is who you are this is what's uh, expected of you or this is That's what right. you ever do right this is like a big thing right that we're also given from the start <laughs> and mm -hmm. then and it's always about like reaching for that higher self reaching for that higher vision and really somehow identifying with it this is like th this is interesting yeah. it's interesting i'd love to continue of course conversation with you um mm -hmm. And hopefully we can uh, maybe do another another sort of play. I was thinking about and talking today with Neil, who is a, was a, <laughs> yeah. he was a creator of Teletubbies, which is like, you know, I, I lived in Britain for 10 years. Teletubbies, I don't know if you know what that is. Yeah, absolutely. I know about Teletubbies. So he, was, he was one of the producers and directors of, of that show, yeah. And we were talking today in the morning of, for, as part of the series and we afterwards we talked about you know having another kind of session where we mm -hmm. you know invited people will go and will play and we'll talk about um it, it's interesting for example how he proposed that that if uh, for example medicine comes in and starts fixing people from birth right and it's you're, you're completely perfect and you and what's the point so i was asking i said what's the point of human life then if we're not growing if we're not reaching for the you know, let's say that our spiritual selves mm -hmm. and that was a big question so we thought maybe we'll get together and have a discussion and have that kind of experiential play uh, i'll think up some kind of a yeah but i so think that's a better question too because there's a question that's going around and even an, an ideology that's going around now which is that the meaning of life is to live and um to live that's that's a relative statement you know what does it mean to live? And even if you do that, um, what is the motivation behind it? Exactly. That is the that's the real important question. Exactly, Be because because we know anyway. That's a, such a huge topic. It's yeah, one of my favorite. Uh, so so I would love to invite you there when I think yeah, it's going to be, gonna be in May, and uh, we are plotting it right now. And uh, I I wanted to invite somebody from medical field just to kind of see the perspective of medical scientists, for example, on you know if if we are completely fixed and there we are sitting there what's the point right i can't imagine it because but all of us right everybody i've spoken with and especially the previous project i did which was about healing right i mean those are the stories people lived it was hard it was like like you said through losses nobody came to be this amazing leader um actually those are this is from buddhist which is you know you come through leadership through compassion and where mm -hmm. compassion comes from well from your own dip into depression anxiety that fear of mortality aloneness you experienced it and now you feel it and now you can lead anybody because you know that we we're all the same right and it's like yes. a, um so Absolutely. ah so tell us tell everybody where they can find you so I could, I will put some links out there and, um, yes. and where can people connect with you and your work? And uh, of course we will continue afterwards, uh, you know, probably hopefully in May and play more. I would love to do that. Um, thank you for that. Yeah, I'm excited about doing that. Uh, again, a part of what I uh, propose in the talks that I give, the TED Talk included, is, uh, you know, the basis for behaviorist um, is that we are fixed individuals and that you know the the way we've been built through social conditioning and through our environments pretty much um, stagnates our progress as humans. We are who we are, and um, I contest that to say that there is a way to change that if 
if need be, and that's through owning owning the entire experience itself in order to consciously and intentionally um, alter or uh, alter your environment. So um, if you'd like to understand a little bit more about that, more about me, follow me in the things that I talk about, um, all of the different aspects of what I do, you can do so. I'm at Mr. Frankie Wilson across all major social media. My website is mrfrankiewilson.com. I have videos, I have audio uh, blogs on there. Uh, you can actually capture my radio show or some of the affiliates that are on there as well. Uh, booking information, all of that. Um, also information for uh, the Zoe Communications Agency, which I'm co-principal at with my um, wife, Felicia, uh, again, is at um, Zoe Creates or uh, yeah, Zoe Says Hello, that's Z-O-E, Zoe Says Hello.com. So either of those, MrFrankieWilson.com or Zoe Says Hello.com. I love it. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much. And uh, hopefully we'll play again. Absolutely. Thank you so much again for this invitation. I really enjoyed it. I'm looking forward to the next conversation.